Hello, I am Bill Conger, Curator of Collections and Exhibitions at the Peoria Riverfront Museum, and I am so pleased to invite you to see Vantage Points, Contemporary Photography from the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. We are thrilled to have in this exhibition over 60 works by 22 artists that span about 35 years in a particularly interesting point in photography when the medium is exploring amazing expressive capabilities and predates just by about 10 years the advent of digital photography. So this is a really fascinating look into contemporary art and the use of photography uh, in contemporary art. In this exhibition, we have three areas of focus. The narrative or the story, the environment, and the portrait or the person. So interestingly, these areas are able to focus on various approaches to photography, such as right next to me, the use of the photograph as a three-dimensional media. And essentially, this artist, Richard Artschwager, has constructed a sculpture from photography, uh, which pushes us into a different realm of seeing an image we have to at the same time consider the image as an actual object, which becomes very profound and an interesting experience. Hi, I'm Carrie Springer. I'm a curator at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York City. Um, and I'd like to invite you to an exhibition that the Whitney has brought to the Peoria Riverfront Museum. Vantage Points, Contemporary Photography from the Whitney's Collection includes 65 works from the Whitney's permanent collection that are, were taken from 1970 to the early 2000s. Um, it's a wonderful opportunity to see some of the most significant artists working during that time. We all have an opportunity to see photography in books and magazines and reproduced in many different ways, but to actually see the works in person is the way that they were meant to be seen. These artists made photographs of a particular size, particular media, some in color, some in black and white, and seeing them in person gives you an opportunity to see them the way the artist had in mind and gives us all an opportunity to look at them with an open mind and look into the mind and hearts of the artists. My name is Melissa Ann Penny. I am one of the photographers in Vantage Points from the Whitney Collection, curated by Carrie Springer. I'm very honored to be in the show and to have been here at the Peoria Museum and talking to Carrie about the show together today. I liken my style to the idea of play, that I'm totally immersed when I'm taking pictures. I'm totally immersed in what's around me. I'm paying attention to what's going on and trying to find the right place to see it. I can see I have a feeling when there's something really exciting, visually exciting, that's either happening or that's going to happen. And I just have to get in the right place, you know, to, to capture it, really. So I'm interested in transcendence, in finding ordinary moments that um, become extraordinary, not necessarily because they're photographed, but because they're lived that way. But they're just fleeting. They, they're gone, you know, in a second or two. So please come visit Vantage Points, Contemporary Photography from the Whitney Museum of American Art. This exhibition was curated by Carrie Springer from the Whitney and was generously funded by Art Bridges, the Oak River Foundation, and of course, the Visionary Society of the Peoria Riverfront Museum. Thank you. This is an array of Polaroids and chromogenic prints from Andy Warhol, uh, which were taken in 1973 when Andy was in Rome filming uh, a couple of films that he was working on at the time. And what's fascinating about these images is we, we understand Andy as a, a painter and a, kind of a persona, a performance person, but these very tender, uh, photographs really, I think, enlighten a different part of Andy.
the intimacy of viewing these. These are actually the images, uncropped, unaltered, that Andy would have seen in his very famous camera that he would take around with him everywhere. So we really are seeing the world through Andy's eyes in these photographs. Often a lightning rod of controversy. The career of Robert Maplethorpe uh, was truly a, a kind of uh, treacherous one through uh, the 80s and late 70s. And what we have here is an image of Robert, a self-portrait that he commandeered just shortly before his death. He died of AIDS less than a year after this photograph. And what we have here is his image that's slightly in, out of focus, um, while the cane that he had taken to using is fully in focus, almost uh, hyper-realistically so, and really coming out at the viewer, uh, advancing forward as his face kind of recedes. So what we're kind of left with is this image of Robert leaving the world as death moves in. Some of the ways photography is used in vantage points um, shows the various kind of approaches to photography as other than just a finished product. These photographs by Robert Longo are actually studies for very famous drawings he ended up making called Men in the Cities. Uh, the, the subjects here are his friends dressed in kind of business attire and uh, the, the poses which mimic either dancing or actually kind of some kind of mortal wounding from a film um, were achieved by uh, Robert throwing items at them at, uh, at the studio roof uh, of, his, uh, of his studio. So these are fascinating looks uh, into how amazing works of art are made, really. Richard Avedon, uh, probably most known as a, uh, a kind of fashion photographer, documentary photographer, um, really propelled himself into art history through this series called In the American West, which was produced in about 1980. And the, the approach, the commission that he was charged to, to do was essentially make a portrait of uh, the American West, the people who lived there. And ironically, what, what he does here is obliterates the background. So we see no cactus, we see no mountains. We see the pure kind of rugged individualism of America um, seen through very realistic lens. Um, the, there are homeless people, there are carnies, there are miners, there are uh, a, a real kind of cross-section of struggling America, which really takes a different um, approach to the heroism that we are typically accustomed to seeing the American West. Um, and, and I think ultimately he has created a portrait of America that endears. This work, Head Number One, by Philip Lorca de Corcha, is a very entrancing image uh, that really does not have a lot of information. There's just a kind of a black background behind this gentleman as he seems to be in some kind of excited, agitated state. De Corcha actually constructed a, a strobe in Times Square and with a hidden camera would capture the reactions of people walking to work or to the restaurants or to stores completely uninhibited by what is happening around them. So what Philip is trying to do here is capture moments of complete and unadulterated uh, honesty. And I think it's a fascinating image that the viewer is really compelled to complete. These works by Matthew Barney are actually documents of film works that, that Matthew makes. He, he is a sculptor, he, is a, he draws, he makes photographs, but primarily he's a filmmaker. So what we're seeing are these amazing artworks that are kind of uh, almost, I would say, advertisements for the, for the film. Ironically, here in Peoria, Illinois, uh, we have a, a kind of controversy that has gone on for a couple of decades or more. Uh, in a civic sculpture that we have that the artist Richard Serra was originally commissioned to do. That, that work was actually scrapped and given to an artist named Ronald Bladen. 
Um, subsequently, Richard Serra has not had a lot of great things to say about Peoria. However, Richard makes a cameo appearance in this film, and we are pleased to finally have Richard Serra in Peoria, Illinois. Artist Lorna Simpson is an African-American artist who uses a combination of imagery and text and uh, kind of combines those in a way that provokes the viewer um, to make associations between texts and images that uh, really is kind of unique to the viewer. So what we have here are words like back, which means all, obviously the, could mean the back of a person or it could mean actually going back somewhere. And next to it we have an actual back that's the shape of which is mimicked by the braid of hair on the left. There's a, a very complicated but fun kind of uh, bounce back and forth uh, between the panels. And the meanings of the words, we're really forced to slow down and consider and think about their relationship to the images. And they, these, these works can be very enlightening and, and also profound and painful at times. Rodney Graham is a conceptual artist who works in a multitude of different media, but these are probably some of his most famous images of inverted or upside down trees. And the story uh, behind these works really connects to their process. Uh, Rodney, when he was photographing the Canadian countryside, built a camera obscura, which is an old form of a projector essentially that allows the outside to the inside. Um, and in doing so, the camera obscura actually projects an upside down image to create the final uh, photograph, which would, it, which would be presented right side up. However, Rodney was so entranced by these trees uh, projected upside down, he actually noticed that there was a shift, a meaning shift, and the kind of endemic qualities of trees growing upward, blossoming, blooming with strong roots, symbols of strength, really were challenged and, and remade by this simple move of turning them upside down. Subsequently, Rodney makes an entire series of these trees, and we have four amazing examples in this exhibition.